making a movie is a is a big deal because you're you're working in various stages on this one idea and one project from the screenplay to the pre-production to the production to the post-production and then it doesn't end yeah. and you have to stay with it through its release yeah and the aftermath of the release and then you get to experience what the movie was then you have your emotional response and uh, <clears throat> I spent too many years going from one project to another I can't I don't want to do that anymore it's just too hard I'm a, uh, one of the things that I'm uh, amazed and curious about with directors is is keeping track of the emotional journey you expect the audience to have when you're watching the film which you obviously have the first time you read the script and you have a response to it and you've got a feel for it but by the time that you're actually finally editing the film uh, you must be numb those feelings must be numb from having re-experiencing the same story over and over and over and over and over and over again <clears throat> and how do you keep track of where your sort of your, your guideposts are and where your flags are you have to from the beginning when you read a script or work on a script or write a script have all those things in mind and keep them in mind up until the moment you start shooting the film and then you have to be open for that all to change and sometimes it's exactly the same as you saw it originally when you read something or envisioned something in your mind and but sometimes it's vastly different mm. some other part of the film becomes very important it be becomes glorious and you didn't expect it See, that's the wonderful thing about directing you just don't know and storytelling in that sense because something will come alive you didn't see before and is it always right to go for that to allow that absolutely yeah absolutely you got to try it you got to try it you got to let it go and see and then <clears throat> once you once you put the movie together for the first time or the second time third time and watch it then you can make your evaluations okay maybe maybe that isn't going to serve the film hardest thing to do of course for a director is to cut things that you love right that you know took a long time to get and were painful to get very hard to let go of but you have to be ruthless with yourself that's the one thing i learned you can't be precious you can't right with yourself you have to be really hard on yourself and really analyze the film in a hard way and not romanticize it I think that's true with acting as well because you're uh, you might have an idea of of uh, some emotional beat in a scene or something like that, and the director doesn't want it. You know, that's that's tough. Well, it is, and it's but, you know, you're it, does, it, it feels tough, and you you sort of fight for it, and you know, but also it's a very different experience watching it to to seeing it, and you know, the directors watch the first person to see the movie, so you have to. Mm. You know, you've got to trust. Now, I'm looking at the uh, the colours. Uh-huh. Uh, is there a... The blues and greys, is that something that um, that's like a, t a hue to it? Is that something that you discuss before you start? There's a, like a colour palette that you're... Well, the people directly involved with the colour in the movie, before we start to shoot, are, of course, the director of photography, mm. you're on, and the production designer... Uh, Paul Peters Tonight. and Paul came up with a general background feel to the walls and the rooms and what color it's going to be because in a lot of these places it's green right that's one of the danger colors for me in motion pictures I know nowadays a lot of directors love to tint the whole film either green or coral or blue there's a whole style now which is the kind of digital Right. Finishing style. Well, you see it in a lot of films. They bleach it. They change the colors. We didn't do that. Those were the walls. They were painted that mm. way. And then, for instance, in this room, we have some warm light on you from behind and then from the side lit. Cold light coming from the side, side lit there from the outside, from the window. But in this case, uh, the walls are taking care of a lot of it for us. And my whole approach is to try to make everything look as, in some ways, as naturalistic as possible. Because imposing a visual style over the entire movie, for me, and I'm because I'm a, an old guy, takes me right out of it. I, I'm, I'm thinking, why does everybody look so strange? Why is everybody blue? 
It's not that there there could be blue light on people. Right. But why is everybody this color? Why is the world this color? Because right. it's not realistic. Especially in a horror film or a psychological thriller or a suspense film, you want the audience to be watching what they assume is the real real world. Now, when we have our flashbacks in this movie, we did distort it. We used a digital process in the editing room. I can't remember what it's called now because... Alzheimer's is approaching quickly, but it changed in the visual feel of it. But a whole movie like that, I, I this is my mm. personal taste. I just couldn't stand it. They, there's a lot of uh, healthy contrast in these night scenes, put it that way. The blacks are, are deep. Yeah. And uh, that was on purpose. I wanted, wanted the blacks to have a, a, you know, to be really solid, nothing thin about them. And nowadays in, in movies, uh, all this stuff is done the finishing stuff's done on computer. Where the old days, when I first started, it was all film. So you would sit with a color timer right. in a theater and watch it. And as it's going by, make your comments. And he would make a pass. It would take days to get back. Right. right now, the process is an online process where you're sitting there in a room. And he does it right in front of you. So you can see it right away. Right away. Wow. And it's uh, it's really it's really great. It must be... Uh take some self measure of self-control not to get carried away and you know it's like a new toy to play with isn't it it is and you have to be careful with it because you can abuse the movie by mm. getting carried away as you say with something like you usually color or you can reframe the shots slightly in finishing if you're shooting as we did here now we're not using anamorphic lenses we're using flat lenses meaning spherical lenses mm. that are in the finishing process they're made to to uh Frame to look uh, two, three, five, meaning widescreen. Right. This is the first movie I have done that wasn't in Panavision, and I miss the the something happens, something magical happens when you shoot through that glass, that glass lens, that anamorphic lens. The the flares are different. The, people's faces are somewhat different. And you didn't because of what reason? Money. 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 Couldn't yeah. afford it. Right. Could not afford it on this film. And, uh, but alas, that's a low-budget filmmaking. I mean, it, you know, you're, being an audience member is a, it will take something out of you as well, you know? <laughs> Depending on the quality of the play uh, yeah. and the performers. It's true. But you, you, you know, you have to give energy back if you're watching live performance. You need to respond. The, the, the performers need that, you know, the interaction of their energy to be able to, you know, sustain themselves and keep them going. That's what it's all about, isn't yeah. it? It's, it's what they give you. It's what the audience give you. Yeah, in, in making a movie, uh, as we were talking about earlier off off mic, uh, some actors perform for the crew, right? Which is a big, big mistake to do. It's a big danger in comedy, yeah. Especially in comedy, yeah. But in in any uh, in in any form, now I've got to give you a lot of props for uh, technically a, as an actor. You know, you you would match perfectly for us in the editing room. All t all the technical aspects of this, and you you don't realize how that's an art. It's its own art. Well, it, you know, again, it's a, I think that's again it's a thing about style. You know, because sometimes you're if you notice the style of the thing you're in, where they don't mind. You know, that if things aren't going to quite match, and if you're, you know, you've got your right arm up, your left arm up, because they're going for a different sort of verite type thing, you know? But if it's important, then do it, because it's really annoying to get those notes. Is it? Yeah, because it, you're trying to focus on something else. You know, when you start to get the thing about not having the... The famous thing is don't smoke a cigarette, because... You never, you never know where you were, yeah. and somebody has to or, keep track of it. Keep it below the line of the camera. All this, all sorts of things like that, too. It, the eating scenes are where it can be very, very tough. Mm. You're just shooting it over a period of time. Well, you always see, <laughs> whenever there's an eating scene, it always sees the, the pros play with their food. Yes. So oh, a long yes. time cutting it, getting exactly ready, talking. Of course. They never quite get to the mouth. <laughs> it makes sense. Yeah. Well, I noticed that was one of the things that you had, uh, a, an onset discipline that you had that I um, uh, appreciated, which was that... Um, uh, if you're around the camera, you're only talking about what you need to talk about to get the next shot. And if you want to, you know, discuss um, a really good meal that you had in a restaurant in Spokane the night before, go and do that somewhere else. 
um, because it's distracting to the focus of the people around the camera. And, it is. That's true. That's and, very, very true. And you're, and I think that's one of the reasons why, you, consequently, your days end, you know, if not on time, an hour early. You know, because you, you, your your shooting days are, if you you know, you they 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 don't go over. You know, you get what you need. So uh, we'll get what we need. Sometimes I wish uh, I was younger. <laughs> and I could live purely on coffee and good shoes <laughs> because we could get a lot more uh, bang for our buck if we could sh shoot 18 to 20 hours a day, but it ruins right. you. But it, it ruins you. Yeah, I think... I'll, it's I'll, just destructive. I think you can get by on a week on that, but I'll, if you try and push a couple of weeks doing that, the crew start to fall apart. Everybody does. Yeah. Everybody's feeling it. Yeah. And especially if you shoot... Six day weeks, yeah. which uh, I just can't. Yeah, it's a it's a lure of diminishing returns, isn't it? But it's a lure that a lot of people on on medium and lower budgets are yeah. attracted to. Yeah. Were you aware when you're directing this of uh, certain kind of uh, traditions that you'd created from Halloween that you that because so, some of the things that you did in that movie have become you know they they are. <coughs> They're in the playbook now, aren't they, of suspense films and stuff like that. But you can't think about that. You can't worry about it. You have to, when you're making a schematic of the movie that you're on, the, the present movie, you have to just apply what, everything you know, everything I learned from film school, like mm. my years of watching films and whatever, to the story. Right. So it's, it's, a, it's a different process. But uh, I think that's, then you, be, you really begin to lose everything if you're starting to worry about your legend right. or what you've done in the past. You can't do that. Well, but but what about, because actors do this, you kind of go, ooh, I did this, there was that film I did seven back and I played this moment kind of like that and it kind of worked and I don't think anyone will notice if I just sort of <laughs> pinch that from, you know, a little bag of tricks or something, you know? But that's okay. That's There's okay. nothing wrong with yeah. that. If it works for the story. And, of course, we all fall back on the stuff that we're familiar with. It works, of course. That that makes a lot of sense. I thought it would be an interesting conversation to have with the, um, you know, with the, the studio. Is uh, I want to make a horror movie where nobody dies. <laughs> 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 I mean, there's got to be a body count, right? Well, there are, yeah, I, I, for me, there are just no rules to it. You can't say, there. here's what has to happen. If you do, you're making another movie or a movie you've seen before. I think one of the problems today is that, that uh, there are a lot of people who believe that, well, audiences want to see this. Right. And it's in all areas. Well, they yeah. have to see something. Have, something has to happen every yeah. so many minutes. And then we have to have like three big uh, scenes in the very end to satisfy them. I think the minute you're trying to do that, it's maybe not the best thing for the film. Mm, I agree on that one because but, I, you know, if anyone knew what the audience wanted, they well, nobody they'd be, knows. They'd that. be a gazillionaire. Uh, you know? They try though. You yeah. see how everything imitates something else, and but the success rate remains fairly constant, doesn't it? It does. Um, so, I mean, it, you know, with all the new advances that are made with the sort of market research and testing and everything like that, there's still the same number of, same number of, you know, big hits, the same number of sort of modest hits and the same number of films that don't make money. I mean... It, it's true, but, you know, market research, they don't tell you anything. They, they don't help you. This is where I've always been frustrated. They'll tell you what percentage of that audience right. would rate this film a certain way. But their one contribution to your movie is keep working. If you have a score that's not high enough, keep working. Well, that doesn't mm. mean anything. What does that mean, keep working?